Our State of the Program series here on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel rolls on with a look at the Louisville Cardinals. Um, we're both very excited to do this one. We don't know if we're going to troll our way through it or talk about it seriously, but that's kind of the Louisville program in a nutshell right now. We're excited to get into this one. Um, if you are new to these State of the Program videos, we'll walk you through how we're doing this. We're looking at 45 of the best and most interesting programs across college basketball addressing where we think the program is at currently ahead of the 2024, 2025 season. We are grading them in five different categories, looking at their departures, players they have returning, incoming transfers, incoming freshmen, and then overall vibes, just the feel around the program. Riley's going to give them a rating one through 10 in each of those five categories. I'm going to do the same. We add them together at the end. That gives you a final score out of 100. And that is how you are doing your state of the program this off season. Kansas is the leader in the clubhouse right now, unsurprisingly. They got a 92 out of 100. We've been going through these, and a, a number have gotten sub-50 uh, out of 100. So I, I know grading scale-wise that's failing, but that's not – getting a 50 is not terrible uh, w with the way we're going through this. Riley, um, we're going to start with the departures, which is everybody yep. on this Louisville team. But – um as we were discussing this, that may not also be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you rate through departures one through 10, one being uh, really, really hurts 10 being you're not going to miss them at all. Yeah. Louisville, you don't have to worry about being below 50 on this. I'm just going to go ahead and say that now to card nation, better days are ahead and we're going to kick it off with as like as high as it possibly can be. You're getting a 10 for your departures. And I think some of these guys are good players. I like Sky Clark. I still believe in Sky Clark. I think Brent, Brandon Hunley Hatfield uh, is pretty good low post score, has a little bit of versatility to his game. Uh, I think Tyler Johnson might become a stud at Wake Forest. Like there's individual talent here. And I think with a competent coach last year, Louisville could have at least gotten to the NIT. That being said, Pull the plug, erase everything from the Kenny Payne era, hard reset. You're not going to miss him at all. You get a 10 for that. Yeah, I, I'm giving them a five because you had nobody left on your roster. That's a problem. There, as you mentioned, good players that Louisville, I, I think, could use, that Pat Kelsey could use. Same time, wiping the slate clean, probably for the best. Probably for the best. So yeah. we'll, we'll balance that out with a five. Ten from you. Very strong. Very strong. That, it's a 15. For Louisville after uh, after one, that's not bad at all. Well, we're looking at uh, returners now. There, there are none. I kind of also want to give a 10 to this for the same rationale for why I gave a 10 for the departures. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, well, for Louisville, we'll lump these together because it is all one group that is gone. So you give them a perfect 20 for 20 out of uh, departures and returners. Or do you want me to, I know you're, you are also planning on giving them a 10. Do I need to lower down to a five just to balance us out? No, a no, I'll do the five as well. I think we double our scores. Cause again, returner wise, I think there are guys that are useful. Sky Clark's a good player. Huntley Hatfield, fine player. Tyler Johnson, again, kind of to your point, there, there are ways you could use him. I think there are guys on this roster. There are ways you could use them. So where, where are we at right now with their score? There's a lot of guys who I don't I don't think you could use. <laughs> and that's uh that the fact that they are not returning or the fact that they left is a good thing. Um and the fact that you don't have anybody returning, I, I think is a good thing too. So they're at a 30 right now. Let's go, oh, Louisville. Great yeah. start. It really is for for context. I would go back and watch more of these videos. For context, this is a really good start, and considering that you Lost everybody, bring no one back. You're, <laughs> you're They're in, in the really, catbird really, seat. A really, really good spot, Louisville. So I know we went through that pretty quickly. Obviously, the, the meat of the conversation is going to come in here talking about the incoming transfers because you have 12 new guys to the program. 11 of them are transfers. I know Ali Khalifa and Kobe Rogers transfers from BYU and Charleston, respectfully, going to redshirt this season. So you're looking at nine that are going to be in the rotation. Um, you brought Triore and Ryan Smith over from Charleston, Chucky Hepburn coming in from Wisconsin, pretty hefty price tag 
if you were to believe some reports. Corin Johnson, Terrence Edwards from JMU fame, Javon Hadley, Hisham Pryor, Noah Waterman, James Scott. Um, solid group, I think. How, how do you rate them one out of ten? Seven. And I think Edwards and Pryor, I want, we're probably going to be on the same page with this. Both Edwards and Pryor are better than any player Louisville had last year. So yes. you're, you're just two of your transfers and you already have two guys who are better than anyone who was on the team last year. I love case and Pryor. I think he shouldn't really struggle at all. Adjusting up a level. I mean, he's six ten, can play the four or the five really, really skilled. Like some of his passing, if you watch some of his highlights, um, like he can get a paint touch and kick out. He can facilitate from the elbow. He's got legitimate on ball skills, decently explosive, good rebounder. Like I think both he and Treor, uh, is it Treori or Treor? Treore? We'll go Treore. 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 Treore they both so. they both average eight rebounds a game last year, which I think is huge because Kelsey's identity throughout his Charleston tenure was control the offensive glass play really fast. And I think those two pieces fit into that. Well, um, I'm going to defer to you cause I know how much you love JMU. So tell the people about Terrence Edwards and what they need to know about him. He, I, I think he can be a star. Like I, Louisville had a history um, in the, in the 2010s of getting some up transfers from mid major, from the mid major ranks and having them perform at a really, really high level. I think Terrence Edwards is another guy who can come in and be an all ACC caliber player. And mm-hmm. be their be their guy. I don't know if he's a first team guy, but he's going to make one of those three All ACC teams. What he can do with the ball in his hands, but making for others, creating for himself off the bounce. He can score from all three levels, off the dribble, catch and shoot. He's got good finishes around the rim. Like if you're looking for somebody to build your team around, mm-hmm. I think he is probably the guy who is going to be the go to person on this team. I, I'm giving their transfers an eight. Let's go. I, I, I see the vision. Like I, I see what Pat Kelsey is trying to do. There, there are no right. real stars here, but mm-hmm. you added in a whole, whole roster of versatile pieces that can stretch the floor that excel playing at a higher tempo, which we know Pat Kelsey wants to do. They have an identity already and they haven't taken the court yet. Like to me, that that's a major, major win. And you brought in guys who either are power conference transfers and have proven they can play at the ACC level or were really, really high level mid major non power conference players who mm-hmm. project to be productive making that leap forward. There are there are questions. Like there, there's no traditional big. We don't know how they're gonna handle the physicality of the ACC. Waterman and Pryor are your are your two bigs. Well, James Scott in there too, I guess. Um, but he's making the jump from from Long Beach. James Scott, Pryor and Waterman are gonna be your two main traditional bigs. And mm-hmm. both of them are more face up than want to want to bang down low. But that's also what Louisville wants. And they're going to pose matchup problems for, for teams on the other end. They're going to draw bigger bigs out to the perimeter. And right. that's what Louisville wants to do. I think Hepburn, I've been high on Hepburn's game. I think he was somewhat limited by mm-hmm. Wisconsin's style. And I know it's worked for Wisconsin, but I think he's gotten more that he can show. Corin Johnson, I think, was an interesting piece for Washington. I think them with, with Terrence Edwards in the backcourt, um, that could be a fun trio. That could be a fun trio for sure. Then you add Pryor, Waterman, uh, Hadley uh, in there as well as kind of a, a stretch four. This is a good group and a group that I like. And the fact we're talking about them, like there's some talk about them finishing top four, top five in the ACC. And for that to be this quick of a turnaround from where they were, I think is a huge testament to the job that that Kelsey has done landing quality players that fit a style. There are no proven stars, right? There's no Hunter Dickinson that's coming over who's an all American, but you have a bunch of high level players. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. So that, that gets an eight from me. Yeah. I think he already answered the question of if, how, how he's, how, how is he going to do on the recruiting trail, both high school ranks and in the portal? Cause that was honestly one of my biggest questions with mm-hmm. Pat Kelsey, like at Charleston, he brought in D two guys. You brought in JUCO guys. I was interested to see like what type of talent he would, could bring to Louisville, and he already has exceeded expectations there. And I love, I mean, you mentioned this. You can tell he went for winners. Yeah, <laughs> Terrence Edwards, JMU won how many games last year? 30, 31? 32. 32. tournament team. Javon Hadley, tournament team that won a game. Hepburn made the tournament every, I think, all every year he was yeah. at Wisconsin. Uh, did Long Beach State win the Big West last year? They did, with uh, with um, their fired coach. 
Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. Trey or yeah. another tournament guy. Like I, I like what he's done a lot. And yeah, I will get into this more with vibes, but I think they're pretty easily a top five team in the league. Yeah. So, shall we move to shall I move to their lone freshman, Kahani Roots? Let's, let's move to the lone freshman because uh, you mentioned seeing if he could recruit at at this level. We knew the portal was going to be an emphasis, and it mm-hmm. was like recruiting freshmen at Charleston and recruiting freshmen at Louisville. You're swimming in two different pools. So I didn't expect there to be a lot of freshmen he was going after at Charleston to come over. But Roots is a a, a high four star guy. Mm-hmm. You know, on three has him as the number thirty two prospect in the country. It's a good get. I think it's a good get. How do you rate it? Yeah, I like Roots's game a lot. I'll I mean I'll give him a four. Um, and that, that's not a reflection of him. It's just that it's you know one person class. And I mean I think Roots will definitely crack the rotation. Might be a twenty minute per game player by the season ends. Um, but he's sort of that three, four, I think he's more of a four than a three, but he's not like the most explosive, but definitely has some, I would say some highlight real worthy dunks, like can give you a little bit of above the rim athleticism, even if he's not like the most explosive, pretty good shooter, good rebounder as well. And he can get, gives you some driving ability as like a six, seven, six, eight wing. So, um, you know, I'm always, I'm never really going to hate on adding kids who play at IMG, Link, Montverde, those types of schools. Yeah. And he's he's coming from IMG. And um, I want to say he was committed to Michigan. Might have decommi- I, I feel like it was a pretty big recruiting win to get Kahani Roots. Like, I think well, Kelsey was able to to get him from a couple other big-name schools who he was considered a lean at some point. So, Yeah, I, I'm giving it a three, and there's nothing on, on Roots himself as a player because I, mm-hmm. I, I think he's a productive player. It's a one-man transfer class, so you're kind of capped at what you can do. Um, the fact that, again, Kelsey was swimming in one pool and going to another, there wasn't a lot of overlap there, I think, limits what you can do. Right. It's a it's a three for me because I, I think he's a very good player, a very versatile player. It's good. To, uh, it's easy to project him as the like long-term stretch four with this program. I do question how much of a role he's going to have this year, mm-hmm. per se. I think he'll be in the rotation, certainly. And I, there's a scenario where he starts and is a very, very good player. But there's also a scenario where he doesn't. And so it, it remains to be seen. It's a three for me. I like him a lot, especially like him a lot next year when a lot of these transfers are going to be seniors. Kelsey is somebody who's worked the transfer portal pretty well throughout mm-hmm. his, his tenure at Winthrop and then at Charleston. So I expect Louisville to be a heavy transfer team, particularly early on in the Pat Kelsey era, his tenure there. Um, but I think Ruth has a spot to be a, a long-term featured piece for this program, which, which is good. All right. We're going through vibes. This is the last category. Um, prior to vibes, they're at a 52, which is, uh, for, if you're a Louisville fan, that was Virginia's final score. So, you're going to end up with a higher score than Virginia. You should feel pretty good about that as you're stacking yourself up in the ACC. I'll let you lead off the vibes category again, Riley. One one through ten. Eight. The vibes are so high in Louisville right now. Just go take a peruse through Louisville Twitter. Like they are back the way that their fans are chirping. And this isn't even a knock on them. Louisville fans, I got love for y'all. They're talking like the last two years didn't happen. It's it's like, yeah, we are Louisville. We got banners in the Yum Center. We got fat NIL checks coming through the program. R- hashtag revival, which I think is kind of corny. But uh, you know what, Pat? Do your thing. Pat Pat's going to give you some corniness. But if you bring in studs oh, yeah. and you get Louisville back to prominence, who cares? Vibes feel like at an, an eight right now. I have vibes as a nine. There was a deciding factor for me that we'll get to in a second. <laughs> um, But yeah, you you've... Wash your hands of the Kenny Payne era. That helps vibes immensely. Kelsey has done an excellent job, I think, reinvigorating the energy around Louisville, which Louisville needed, particularly with the way the last two years have gone. I think you feel great about your transfer class. I think you feel great about the direction of your program. It's been a complete 180. Now, some of this is just the desperation of the Louisville fan base to have something positive to latch onto, Right. That that's going to help with the vibes, but the feeling has certainly shifted and is immensely positive at Louisville. Um, I had them as either an eight or a nine with your eight. That would have given them a 68 with a nine. It gives them a 69. So I went with the nine. We're given we're finishing Louisville off here with a 60. Nice. 
Rick Pitino is not the coach anymore. <laughs> this is this is one thing too, by the way. I noticed this on on Louisville Twitter popped up on my timeline. So speaking of Rick Pitino, the restaurant where the you know interaction, the 15 second interaction happened. Kelsey like took a picture there with his parents, like in front of the sign and everything, like at the restaurant. And Louisville fans are like, oh, is this it's I th- Kelsey, I think, is is kind of gets the gets the fan base, mm-hmm. gets the program, and is em- embracing some of that. Which I don't know if if Pat Kelsey meant to do that and send out a statement, like proverbial statement with with that. Um, but the vibes are high. The vibes are high. This Louisville program, I I think there's a real chance to make the tournament this year. I think there's a I'm very real you. chance of that. I agree. Uh, I think it could play out very similarly to Chris Mack's first year there, where um nationally the expectations weren't that high and then they went on a run in the middle of the season sort of slipped up down the stretch but still got in the dances i want i think a seven seed could very much see that type of um situation at play here again and for louisville fans how can you (laughs) how could you complain about that yeah exactly i I would caution louisville fans to not get ahead of themselves like this team is not making a final four run it'd be great if they did probably not making a final four run but they're going to be exciting to watch and fun and competitive and pretty good, I think, which is a, a big change from where Louisville has been. And I think Pat Kelsey is on the track to get Louisville back to where Louisville basketball probably should be and it historically has been. So it'll be fun to see the 69 for Louisville, one of the, the better grades we've handed out here on Service Media YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you check out the other 44 videos that we've done so you can really see how the Cardinals stack up. Thanks for watching the Sleepers channel, which is brought to you by MyBookie. Cart, could you please tell the listeners about MyBookie? If you need the best sports book, the official sports book of Sleepers Media, MyBookie, it is the only place where they give you the opportunity to play your way and get paid easily. They have absolutely everything you need. Anything that you need betting-wise, MyBookie is equipped with it. And right now, we have a first deposit bonus of up to $1,000 by using promo code SLEEPERS. That's promo code SLEEPERS over at MyBookie. Instant deposit bonus up to $1,000. Greg, that means you put $1,000 in there, you get $1,000 free dollars to bet. I don't know if there's a better deal than that out there. So head over to MyBookie right now. It's the official sports book. We use MyBookie on a daily basis. Trust me. And it is working out perfectly for us. So... Go ahead and get with the wave. Head over to my bookie, the official sports book of Sleepers Media. Yeah, I love bonus dollars. That's what I love. And my bookie has a great offer for you right now. Go take advantage. Link in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.